Good morning. Hi, Dr. Melody here with Fit Plus Faith. Hello and welcome to our Rooted in Christ devotional this morning. <clears throat> Getting all set up here with my blanket. It's like cold this morning, which for San Diego is a little rare. And so it's feeling like fall a little bit more, which is really nice. <laughs> Good morning. So we are going through, we are on day 49 today of our Rooted in Christ Devo. And we're going through day 49, talking about being accepted, being accepted by God, being accepted. This idea of acceptance that we have all dealt with, that we all want, that we all crave, right? In the innermost parts of us, we just want to be accepted. We want to be seen and heard and known. And that's what we're talking about today. So good morning. Elizabeth says it's cold in Alabama too. Yuck. Well, for us, the San Diego cold is like in the 50s. <laughs> it's probably low 60s outside right now. Um, but it was super foggy when I woke up this morning. Anyways, it's feeling like fall. I had the fire on earlier this morning. I've got my blanket wrapped around my legs. So awesome. <laughs> Great to see so many of you this morning. Good morning, Grace, hopping in from uh, South Africa. Great to see you. Corinne, good morning. Sonia, good morning. Tanya from Las Vegas, good morning, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Happy Monday to you. Happy Monday, and it's November, and it's about to be election time. <laughs> We've got crazy things happening. This is crazy. We're at the end of this year. It's coming to the end. It has been a doozy this year, hasn't it? But you know what I've heard for, from so many people as they have seen and felt God working amidst all the unexpectedness, all the chaos, all the craziness of this year. They have drawn closer to the Lord. <clears throat> they have heard from the Lord more than ever before. I've just been hearing beautiful stories, you know, and so... Even though it's chaos on the outside sometimes, like God has never left us. He, he is always here. He is always with us. And there truly have been beautiful, amazing stories of people coming to the Lord in this difficult time of growing in the Lord. Um, maybe, you know, in, in times of difficulty is often when there's some big lessons that can be learned, when there's big things that God wants to birth out of us and, and teach us in this moment that wouldn't have happened if life was just easy and, and even keel, you know? So it's through the difficult times, oftentimes, that there is powerful moves of God in our life if we allow it. If we don't allow it to, to drive a wedge and separate us from Him, it's actually a time of growth in the Lord and experiencing Him in new ways. And so, wow, so, so, so crazy. Yeah, Tanya says God was able to slow us down and opened our eyes. You're grateful for this year. I'm grateful for this year too. I am. God has done amazing things this year. In these difficult times, I have been blessed in so many ways over and over and over again. It's been it's been incredible. Sonia says it's 36 degrees in Chicago. <laughs> you headed out for a walk? I'm glad you're taking us with you, but holy cow, that's cold, girl. Oh my goodness. Yes. Wow. Thank you, ladies, for sharing. Yeah, what a blessing to be able to vote for the, our leaders. We have to get out and vote, guys. You have to make your vote known, regardless of how you may feel about the Electoral College. And sometimes I feel that that is unfair. You still have to go out and make your vote known. And so however you do that, we will definitely be voting uh, today or tomorrow, probably drop our ballot off and be done. But today we are talking about being accepted by God. That is our topic this morning. That is your identity in Christ is that you are accepted. You are accepted. So go ahead, repeat after me, type it down below. This is your declaration for today. I insert your name, Melody, am accepted just as I am. I am accepted just as I am. That's your declaration for today. Say it out loud, type it below. You are accepted just as you are. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that he accepts us just as we are. He accepts us, he knows us, he created us, nothing is a surprise, and he accepts you just 
as you are. This goes beautifully hand in hand with the Devo that we did on Friday, talking about, it wasn't accepted, it was another word though, approved. Talking about being approved by God was our previous devotion. These things go hand in hand, being approved by him. You have the green light. He's already given you his stamp of approval because you are his, because you said yes to him. And now today we piggyback on that, that you are accepted by the Lord. I want you to think back. Has there been times <clears throat> that you haven't felt accepted? Has there been times that you have sought acceptance in different ways that were apart from God? Where are you craving this idea and this desire of acceptance? You have it already in him. I think back to, you know, I mean, when we all go through our different challenges in life, different ages bring on different challenges and this feeling and this need for acceptance. I remember it must have been probably junior high that I struggled the most, seventh and eighth grade with acceptance and just wanting to be accepted by my peers. You know, we all want that. We want that friendship. We want that those feelings of acceptance. <sighs> There's so many different things that we will go through. And if you really look at the root of it, where is this coming from? Why am I doing these things or making these choices? or feeling this way, it's because I either feel unaccepted or I'm doing things to try to earn or gain acceptance that are not good for me, right? Or that are just, they're skewed. <clears throat> Tanya says, I don't fit in anywhere. I only fit in with God. I work in a place where literally no one talks to me. I am alone, but I am okay with that. Wow, Tanya, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. That is a challenging situation when you're literally are like, I have no one. I have no one. I don't fit in. I'm an outcast. But who am I accepted by? I'm accepted by my creator, by the one that created me and knows me and loves me. I'm accepted, accepted by Jesus that gave his life for me. Will I allow that to be enough? Will I allow that to be enough? Or will I continue in relationships in unhealthy ways of gaining acceptance? Will I continue in some negative things because I'm seeking that so desperately? But man, to sit back and to allow the acceptance of God to rush over you, so beautiful. Yes, Sonia, just as I am, without one plea, she's from a beautiful song, just as I am. Yes, Corinne says, you are not alone here, Tanya. Exactly. This is why I love our community here at Fit Plus Faith is we are the body of Christ together, showing one another that we love one another, that we accept one another, that this is a beautiful place that you can find community, even though it's online. It's a beautiful thing that we have going here as the body of Christ. But even if we didn't have that, would we allow the acceptance of God to be enough? Just as we are, without having to strive, without having to work or earn or prove, just knowing we are accepted by him. If that is an area that you struggle with, if that is an area that even as an adult, you find yourself grasping and, and grappling for acceptance in other people, in other things, apart from God, not as him, as the, as the sole acceptor of you to fill that hole, then spend some time with him. Spend some time with him. Just get alone and just let him minister to your heart. Allow him to ask him to soften your heart, open it up and to just receive his acceptance without you having to prove or work or earn or do anything else to be worthy enough, you already are. You already are. It's time to allow yourself to receive that gift 
and set it and set you free. That's what it's meant to do, to set you free so that you don't have to gain and earn and strive for other people's acceptance. You don't have to. He already has given it to you. You just have to receive it, right? You just have to take it in. Man, Tanya says, thank, thank God. It has been a hard season for three long years. I pray for what is meant for me. Yeah. Yep. It is a season. Just like you said, these times, these are, these are seasons that will come and go. So let's dive into Acts chapter 10 and learn more about God's acceptance of us. Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 38. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. Wow. Amen that God accepts everyone who receives him. Everyone who receives him, God accepts him just as he is with his past, with his struggles, with his sin. He accepts them all and says, come to me, receive my acceptance, be set free and allow me to change your life right? Lay your burdens down. Repent of your sin. Don't turn back to it anymore. Step into my life-giving acceptance of you. Free from bondage. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So I love that. He accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is good. Who fear him and do what is good. Man, do we recognize God for the all-powerful? It's unimaginable, guys. It's, it's really, truly is hard to wrap our, our brain around. But do we fear him because of how holy he is? Do we fear him in awesome reverence? In giving him unending praise and gratitude for who he is because he is Lord of all? And then because of what Jesus has done, for us that we just get to receive this acceptance and walk in that it doesn't matter what anyone else says it doesn't matter what anyone else does it doesn't matter if you're accepted into your group of peers at work even though that's challenging it doesn't even our families even our families their acceptance of you should still not be greater than what God's acceptance of you means to you and does in your heart. I am accepted just as I am. I receive his love. I receive his grace. I receive his com compassion. I walk forward in his love. I can love others because he first loved me. I can forgive others because he first forgave me. I am accepted in, in all of it, in my weakness, in my sin. I am still accepted and I seek the Lord for repentance, for forgiveness, for grace. And I choose to turn from those things and walk with him into life, into life more abundantly because I've received the gifts that he gives me and I keep on receiving them. I don't push them away. I don't let myself get stuck. I don't let myself fall into the spiral of negative thinking, of doubts, of cursing God. I speak life over myself. I speak life to all those that I can. Being accepted by the Lord sets you free from judgment of man 
that still is an area occasionally that I'll deal with, with certain people wanting to fit in, wanting to have them not think bad of me or think less of me or whatever. But when we can see that for what it is and then get to that place that's, it doesn't matter. I want to love them no matter what. And I'm not going to allow their acceptance or lack thereof to affect me. God's opinion and view is the number one and the only one. That's where I want to be. That's where I work to be in that place. But even if I fail and even if I give in or I let these other things, you know, overtake me for a minute. He's ready to accept me again. It's grace. It's beautiful, isn't it? Man, it's so good to be set free from the need of acceptance of man. I want to read you this beautiful, uh, quick testimony in our devotion. So if you do have your journal, whether you have the um, paperback copy or the digital copy, throughout it is different testimonials of what God has done in these people's lives. And so I want to read you Jamie's story because it goes along with today's devotion. Jamie is one of our beautiful sisters in our Fit Plus Faith community. And so she submitted a story. So she says, in one of Dr. Melody's programs, Heart First Health, we began to explore our true identity in Christ. I realized I had so many earthly identities placed on myself and that some of them were too hard to live up to or from my past that I didn't want to hold on to anymore. When realizing where my true identity came from in Christ and all that comes with that, excuse me, I really had an aha moment. It meant that I could have my identity be in Christ and it did not matter what other people identified me as or how I had identified myself. That I only had to be who God saw me as. Loved, cherished, special, unique, powerful, forgiven. This has been so freeing and life-changing for me. Man, a beautiful story. A beautiful story from Jamie, being able to not let her family's influences of her, which are not, not Christians, not believers. So she's walking a different culture than her family, which is challenging. It, prevents, it presents a lot of challenges. But to get to that place where even if my family doesn't understand me anymore, even if they, they don't understand me, they reject me, they make fun of me, whatever it is, that I can let that go. I can let that fall off my back because I know that I am walking with the Lord and I know that he accepts me more than what they ever could. And I don't have to live trying to apologize or walk in their expectation anymore I am free to walk with the Lord, receiving his acceptance and all he has for me. It's a beautiful, beautiful testimony. And I'm sure many of us have stories like that, right? What is your story of acceptance or where do you need more acceptance from the Lord to receive more of it, to open yourself up, to receive it, to ask the Lord for healing and for breaking of chains and for deliverance from the things that you are feeling caught up in. You don't need that anymore. Just him, just him. He is your deliverer. He is your redeemer. Elizabeth says, I was just texting your cousin this morning about depression and mental illness. This is what I said. I know my heart is different now than it's been for the past 12 years. My parents were divorced and both struggled with substance abuse, but either way, I never doubted my mom's love for me, but not so much with my dad. It has been a long time of learning this lesson. God has always accepted me even when my family didn't. Oh, thank you for sharing. Yes, that is, that is it. God has always accepted me even when my family didn't. I know that that's not always easy. 
That's not always easy. And as we're getting closer to the holidays, man, as fun as that is, there's also a lot of difficulty. There's a lot of pain that can be there. There's a lot of sadness from loss for family members that may not be with us anymore. There can be just difficulty when you're coming together and you just don't agree on things, right? We don't see eye to eye on things. Our family has, you know, special ties in our life that can cut deeper than another person may. And so there's difficulty coming up in the holidays as well. But how can we step into more and more of God's acceptance that when you do have those family encounters, you can love them, you can show compassion and forgiveness to them, you can disconnect from allowing their words to hurt you and cut you so deeply by saying, I don't need all of their approval and acceptance to be loved, to be worthy. I have it in the Lord. What do I need to do to fully step into that? Do I need to prioritize more time with God? Do I need to just spend more time with him? Do I need to read his word more? Do I need to just be in, in a quietness, learning to meditate and quiet my mind to hear from the Lord and to hear and to feel the love that he has for me? What do you need to do for you to prepare yourself for some of these difficult situations that may arise? that the holidays can bring up with relationships and with, with people, you know? Beautiful Tanya, she says, it was, it was super hard. My oldest daughter didn't talk to me for over two years. I prayed and stayed patient, and last Christmas she talked to me again. The key is knowing that we must trust God. Yes, that is so challenging at times, but it's a part of your growth journey. It's a part of your experience with God, seeing him work in your life, and in the lives of those around you. But you have to begin to trust him more, right? That growing peace. <laughs> trust is not always easy. We think logically it should be easy. We should have no reason to not trust God, but it's still difficult. So stepping into that trust that he is for you, that he is working in your life, that you are to plug into him more than anything else and he will lead you and guide you with what to do, with what to say, with what not to say, right? He will help you in all of those things, but it goes back to where are you seeking your primary identity from? If your primary identity is to be accepted by your family, then you're going to do things and compromise in certain ways or lower your standards or unguard your heart. And that's not what God is wanting for us. He wants us to have him number one in our heart, right? To seek him above all things, to find our true identity in him so that we can be his love and compassion and grace to other people. We don't have to be striving and killing ourselves to gain approval from someone else that we may never get. But we don't have to ever be in that situation with God. He's never withholding from us. Never. So receive that today. You are accepted just as you are. That's your declaration. Type it below if you haven't yet done it. Say it out loud. I, Melody, am accepted just as I am. I am accepted just as I am. And I have the trust to know that he will guide me, that he is with me, that he will lead me to the next step, that he will go before me, that he will work in other people's lives. I don't have to do it all. I don't have to be it all. I don't have to say the right thing or be afraid that I said the wrong thing. I just am led by him. And at the end of the day, that's where I need to make my peace. At the end of the day, that's where I need to make my peace. If I know that I followed what he wanted, that I followed what he wanted me to do, that I was obedient to him, then no matter what the outcome, I have to be able to make my peace with that. Man, but you are so loved. You are so loved. You are accepted. You don't need to go do or be or try to earn it from anyone or anything else. 
Your heavenly Father loves you. Jesus died on the cross for you. Receive his gifts of grace and mercy and acceptance today. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Thank you for being here this morning. I will see you Wednesday and Friday at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time, I believe. And tomorrow morning, we have our uh, Natural and Non-Toxic Living Session 3. We have that tomorrow. Normally, that is at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Tomorrow, it's going to be at 7.30 a.m., a little bit earlier than normal. But we've got, um, I've got another meeting that I can't miss. So 7.30 a.m., I'll see you here tomorrow morning for Natural and Non-Toxic Living. And then I'll see you again on Wednesday and Friday as we keep moving through our Rooted in Christ devotional. If you don't yet have your paperback copy, you can get it at rootedinchristbook.com. That will take you to the Amazon listing. And if you like digital version, if you, if you want a beautiful full color digital version and grab your own journal to go with it, you can get that at rootedinchristdevo.com. And so that is our digital version. So, all right, everybody, I love you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Happy November to you. And I'll see you later on inside our groups and right here on the Fit Plus Faith page. Have a great day. Bye.